Okay, I know I'm a little late to the dance on this one, but I feel like I should review the show anyway. Um, NXT TakeOver The End um, happened Wednesday night, and overall I thought it was another really good TakeOver special from NXT. Uh, they haven't had a bad one yet. Uh, there, <laughs> you can always expect a, at least an above-average level of quality from the TakeOver specials. I, I don't think this was one of the stronger TakeOver specials. It's certainly not up to the level of our, our Evolution or uh, Brooklyn. I, I think those two are the two best. Um, but it's, it, it was still pretty good. I mean, NXT TakeOver specials are, you know, they're, they're expected to be at least above average. And this was certainly that, just two hours of pure, fun, solid wrestling with some nice payoffs, nice matches, and plenty of stuff to enjoy. Uh, there was nothing on the show that I disliked. Uh, it was just two hours of solid, solid stuff. So with that, let's jump into it. Opening match was Ty Dillinger taking on the debuting Andrade Cien Almas. Uh, pretty solid match, nice athletic contest. Almas broke out some really cool, uh, creative shit in there. Uh, really showed off his athletic ability. Um, I feel like Ty Dillinger has kind of become the new CJ Parker, as CJ Parker's bit for a while was that he would be the guy that would lose to the debuting guy. And since CJ Parker left, nobody's really filled that void, and I guess that's Ty Dillinger's job now. So, because I feel like every time I see him, he's always losing to the new guy that debuted. I think he lost to Aries in Aries' first match with NXT. Uh, he lost to Almas. Um, I think there was one other one that he did, so it's kind of becoming his thing now. Um, but... Yeah, it was, overall the match was solid. Nice, solid opener to kick things off. Uh, next match was the NXT title match, uh, the Revival taking on American Alpha. And holy Moses, that match was amazing. I mean, this this match was tag team art just all throughout. Everything I love about tag team wrestling was in this match. And they managed to put on an exciting action-packed match while keeping within the confines of the rules of tag team wrestling, something I wish the Young Bucks would do. I know I shit on them a lot, but... You know, for an example of what I like about tag team wrestling, watch this match right here because you had clear cut baby faces in American Alpha that everybody loved. Um, and they're great athletes and so charismatic and so easy to get behind. And even when they, they get a hot tag or they fire up or something like that, it's impossible not to be infected by it. And you have the Revival who are just very good. I, I, they really remind me of, like, the Four Horsemen almost, or, or the Brain Busters, so like that Tully Arn type of pairing. They just have that type of style to them where they know how to get heat, but they also know how to compliment the baby faces and make them look really good and just tell the best story possible. And they did so many things in this match, or from the spots they did to the the way they uh, played with the rules of tag team wrestling, especially towards the end with some of the blind tags and everything. And um, just from bell to bell, it was an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, tag team contest. I, I mean, I can't put this match over enough. I loved it. It was easily my favorite match on this show, without question. I loved it to death. Um, just an outstanding tag team contest. And uh, favorite match on the show Great stuff all around. I was legit heartbroken when American Alpha lost the title uh, because I love them so much. And um, the Revival, get the, they got the titles back. They are now the first ever two-time NXT Tag Team Champions. Um, it was legit heartbreaking, but in a good way because it puts heat on the heels. It's like, okay, that's great. And, and American Alpha got beat up by Paul Ellering's new team, which that was a very nice surprise. It's like, ooh, Paul, Eller, Paul Ellering's back, and he's got himself some brutes. It's like, okay. See where this is going. And um, so American Alpha has something to do in the meantime before getting right back in immediately into the title picture. So, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I loved all of this. I mean, anything having to do with the tag titles on this show I thought was absolutely perfect and terrific and just great. And it just all works so beautifully. Uh, easily my favorite part of the show. Uh, next up was Nakamura versus Austin Aries. Uh, really good match. Uh, very hard hitting towards the end, and some of the bumps they took were really sick. Um, I felt like they were trying to recapture the magic from Zayn and Nakamura from uh, from the Dallas special. I don't think it quite measured up to that level, but it was still really good and and fun in its own right, and just a nice action packed match. Another great showcase for Nakamura. Um, Nakamura went over, which was no surprise. Uh, overall, it was. It was a really good match. Uh, there's not really a whole lot else to say other than that. Just very, very good stuff. Um, next up was Nia Jax challenging Asuka for the women's title. Um, I felt like this match was kind of a carbon copy of the Bailey nia Jax match, except it doesn't work as well because 
Uh, Bailey is a more of a believable underdog, so that style of like using submissions to try and take down the giant just worked better for Bailey. Um, and with Asuka, I, I expected Asuka and Nia Jax to have more of a kind of smash mouth, um, kind of crazy brawling type of match. I were you would think that Asuka would be like the one girl that could stand up to Nia Jax straight up, one, you know, toe to toe without any kind of tricks or strategy or anything, and that they didn't really do that. Um, a match was still fine. It was still good. Uh, it was solid. Just maybe not the match I expected, but with Nia Jax, you know, she's not the most versatile performer, so, um, y- you know, you gotta kind of work around her a little bit. Um, I like that they book her to play the big, you know, the big giant. Uh, you know, they actually make her size a, a thing and let that be kind of the driving force of the story of her matches. I think that stuff is fine, but, um, yeah, the match was solid. It was nothing, to, you know, overly special to write home about. Probably the weakest women's title match we've ever gotten from one of the takeover specials. Actually, the two weakest ones we've gotten both involved Nia Jax. And sorry, it's just the way it is, but, um, it was still solid and still enjoyable and a perfectly acceptable title match, um, just not up to the level that we normally get out of the women uh, on these NXT specials. Um, and the main event, uh, Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe, um, I was not the biggest fan of their last match for various reasons. Um, and uh, their match in London was one that I thought was pretty good, uh, not like a major classic or anything. So um, this match was probably the best one that they've had so far. It's not one of the greatest cage matches I've ever seen, and it wasn't um, this amazing like match of the year contender or anything like that. It was a good match. Uh, I wish they had amped up the intensity a little bit more because there's, um, you know, they built this up as this huge feud ender and that both of them wanted to kill each other. And I never really felt like it got into that really heated, these two are trying to kill each other type of thing. Like that type of vibe that a cage match so, should have. Um, and that's it. I mean, you got some cool stuff out of it, like, uh, Finn, um, doing the swing blade off the top and, uh, Joe doing the muscle buster off the top, which looked insane. I mean, that looked nasty. I, that's one of those spots where I'm like, nope, I would not take that. I would not take it. I saw what happened to Tyson Kidd on a regular muscle buster. So, you know, but um, overall, I mean, the match was good. It was, again, a perfectly acceptable main event. Uh, Samoa Joe went over, um, and that makes me think that maybe this show was the end for Finn Balor on NXT, and he'll be moved up to the main roster. Again, we shall see. Um, but overall, it was a nice main event to a very a very enjoyable takeover special. Uh, the tag title match definitely stole the show for me. That was far and away the best part of the entire show, uh, without question. Um, but no, all the other matches were solid, at least. Um, Nakamura and Aries was the second best match, I would say. That one was really good. Um, and it was overall just a nice, solid two hours of wrestling, and, uh, just very enjoyable all around, but that tag title match, if you're only gonna watch one part of the show, watch the tag title match, because that match was fucking incredible, and I loved it, so, um, so yeah, NXT, they delivered on another one, very good show. Uh, I also wanted to talk about Lucha Underground this week, uh, a lot of big things happened, uh, that I wanted to talk about. We got the nunchuck match between, uh, Drago and Aerostar taking on Jack Evans and PJ Black, which is a match that really has been built up all season long, ever since Jack Evans beat Drago, uh, very early into season two. And, um, that feud has been building and building, building ever since then. And we finally get this match and it was, it was a lot of fun. Now, I thought it was just one of the crazy, you know, it was just a really fun, crazy, wacky, all over the place type of match uh, that fit the feud and was, you know, had great athletic stuff, great brawling, and all types of crazy stuff going all around. And overall, just a really nice match, I thought. It was just very enjoyable. Um, Ultima Lucha Dose is underway. The build up to that is underway. Uh, it's going to be happening in four weeks. Uh, Pentagon has returned, which, yes, that is awesome. And he wormed his way into the world title situation where now uh, we had a six versus six tag team match main event. And the winning team would then face each other individually in a six-way match on next week's episode to determine the number one contender to Matanza. And I think after watching this episode, it's pretty clear that it's going to be Pentagon. Uh, his team won, and uh, I think, who, I'm trying to remember who else was on his team. I think it was Johnny Mundo, 
uh, Taya, um, and they're not going to win it because Johnny Mundo's a trios champion, so he's going to be in the trios title match. And uh, who else was on that team? Um, see, Johnny Mundo, Taya, Pentagon, uh, Phoenix, I think, was on that team. Um, Ivalice, I think? Yeah, Ivalice was on the team because Son of Havoc was on Prince Puma's team. But overall, all right, so you're going to have a six-way next week, and the winner of that match is going to go on to face Matanza at Ultima Lucha. So that's going to be very cool. Um, also, we got the return of Mil Muertes as Katrina revived Mil Muertes, and he broke out of King Cuerno's trophy room, which is one of the coolest things that they've done on this show so far. It's like, so wait, Mil Muertes gets defeated in a casket match. Sorry, Graver Consequences match. Um, and they've established in Lucha Underground that if you get put in a casket, you're automatically dead. Uh, I mean, Conan has not returned since being put in a casket, so it's kind of like, assume that if you get put in a casket, that you're dead. But Mil Muertes has resurrection powers, uh, once activated by Katrina, so, uh, while he was a corpse, King Cuerno took the corpse and propped it up in his trophy room, which is like, that's so awesome. This, this show just keeps doing the wackiest, coolest shit. It's it's incredible, the stuff that they do on the show, but it's so cool. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed this week's episode, and now we're getting closer and closer to Ultima Lucha Dose and uh, the conclusion of Season 2. So uh, I'm expecting some really good stuff here, and I'm expecting Ultima Lucha to deliver a, another really solid show after a pretty enjoyable Season 2, I think. So... Uh, be on the lookout for more for Lucha Underground, because they've got some great stuff coming, I think. So, uh, what else is there to talk about in the world of wrestling? Um, a TNA Slammiversary is this Sunday, for the five of you that care, I guess. I mean, I don't really know what else to say about TNA at this point. Um, I looked over the card, and you've got, um... Drew Galloway versus Bobby Lashley for the TNA World Title in a match that, that can only be won by knockout or submission. Okay, fine. Uh, you've got the Hardy Boys facing each other in a Full Metal Mayhem match, and uh, I know everybody's talking about those um, those segments. We'll, we'll just call it that, that that were filmed at the Hardy House or whatever to kind of build the feud. And I, it, it's one of those things where I look at it and I was kind of like. I feel like they're trying to mimic Lucha Underground, and they failed miserably, because it came off really bad and really cheesy, but, um, I don't know, uh, yeah, so you got that match, you got, uh, the one match I kind of care about is EC3 versus Mike Bennett, I actually think that's a nice feud, uh, you got the, the, uh, the Decay defending the tag titles against Robbie E and Jesse Goddard, the bromance, um, there's a four-way X Division title match. I can't believe that it's like they've got four guys that can fill an X Division title match. Seriously? Okay. Uh, I wasn't aware that they still had that many X Division guys. Um, I think you got Maria versus Gail Kim, but Maria's apparently pulled out. I don't know if that's legit or if that's a storyline or whatever, but, um, and you've also got a women's title match, Jade, taking on the new uh, Sienna, I think her name is. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's TNA in 2016, and they've just got nothing interesting to offer. It seems. I mean, they've got they've got some guys that are good, like EC3, but there's just nothing going on right now that's generating any kind of interest or excitement. And they just, I, I don't know what they're gonna do. Like, I I don't know. Um, I might check out Slam Anniversary just out of sheer morbid curiosity and just for the sake of, uh, you know, having something to say about it. But you know. As far as a preview goes, I can't really give you much because I'm not invested enough to really give you more than that. So uh, I think we're going to wrap it up this week uh, for this particular video. Um, I'll have more for you next week. Um, got a few other videos planned in the coming weeks, so be on the lookout for those. Um, and, of course, if you're not already, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. The link is down below in the description. And uh, I'll have more videos coming up for you uh, in the near future. Obviously, Extreme Rules is happening next. Uh, not Extreme Rules. Uh, Money in the Bank. is that, Sorry. Money in the Bank is happening next Sunday, so I'll definitely have a lot to say about that uh, as we uh, approach that show from the WWE. But... Until then, uh, that is all I have for now, so uh, y'all enjoy your weekend, and peace out, and I will see you all later.